I'm Girlin from Girlin Jeans. Hold on, I gotta take this. Hey! OMG! I am on my way to meet Lori Goldstein, legendary stylist. I'm interviewing her. I'm about to go to her studio and see where all the magic happens. She's such an inspiration to me in everything that I do and her whole philosophy of more is more and anything goes with everything is what I am all about. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to get to speak with her and find all the insider's information out behind every single legendary shoot she's ever done. It's so amazing to me. Oh, this is like so many dreams of mine come true at once. Have you ever done this before? Interviewed anyone? <laughs> no, never. I'm I mean, really of all excited. people, I'm so excited that it's you. Awesome. And at your incredible space, too. My new space. It's beautiful. Right? Got it. You know, it's in your blood. I just always loved clothes. I worked at Fiorucci for a little bit. I had a lot of jobs. It was an amazing time in New York City. Fiorucci was everything, all those t-shirts. It was like, you know, the daytime Studio 54. Everybody who was at studio would come in. Klaus Nomi was my first <laughs> friend. That's when I realized, like, I used to feel like the freak, and now I'm like the normal one. I opened a showroom of my own and represented Anna Sui and all of these like downtown designers. And a stylist was like a dirty word back then because it's like if you weren't an editor at a magazine, you know, then you did catalogs and it was very like uncool and not creative. So I was like, well, too bad, I'm gonna do this. It was the 70s, it really was about expressing yourself in every way. In the movie Romeo and Juliet came out and we were wearing all of those sort of you know, gorgeous puffy blouses, and that was a whole moment. And then Anne Magnuson, this performance artist who was a friend of mine from, you know, the Mud Club, asked me to do this job with Annie Leibovitz for Vanity Fair. <laughs> You know, she likes to push people. Like, that wasn't my job when I was shooting with her because she will never take no for an answer. But I learned a lot from Annie about photography. So that was, you know, again, that was my schooling of that world. I mean, Stephen's one of my best friends because we think alike. You know, we're both like cuckoo buku. I mean, it was incredible working with him. It's like, here's somebody who has exceptional taste, who gets it, who I'm gonna learn from and hopefully teach something to. And, you know, just again, have that collaboration work-wise and also friendship-wise. We just did it in this like 500 square foot office for over 20 years. So you're obviously not like a hoarder then? No, I'm a releaser, so I can hoard again. And then I release and I hoard and That's I like so to keep- That's so smart. Yeah. As you grow and work more and more and more, you know, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until you finally like have that moment. The Versace moment and whole exploration of LA with Hannah Lore, this kind of woman that we both fantasized about. It was all coming from our brains and we were just tripping out on like our work and we were loving it. I think it was 2000 Italian Vogue where you used all of vintage Allen and Susie. Yes. Stephen had just moved to, um, LA and this was like the old like river LA river or whatever it's like just this desolate area and I love I love that shoot I mean the clothes this, for that this are, piece? Are everything. well hello it's Donald okay, I mean that was like a Donald just, Duck plastic head just like mashed on there and like American just, flag like like cropped in it was like old school Beverly Hills on Wilshire Boulevard trying to beg for a diamond ring for a magazine called Vanity Fair we're doing an editorial shoot it's like huh I mean, when I first started working with Madonna, it's like, oh, th we're not gonna get a credit on the album cover? Well, we're not gonna lend clothes. So there was that challenge and it was fun. I'm not a celebrity stylist. I feel really lucky that I did get in that world of doing editorials with celebrities and working with a concept instead of just dressing a person. But it, it's never like, Oh, their celebrities are amazing. I, you know, I love them. And there were many people that I met that I wouldn't think I necessarily would like, like an Arnold Schwarzenegger, who I just loved. Angelina didn't want to go out of her comfort zone. 
Her clothes scared her. I mean, that was my take on it anyways. I guess when you look like Angelina, you don't really have to, you know, you can wear a t-shirt and jean and not have to explore clothing. I guess for me, clothes were this exploration. They were this way of expressing myself. I was totally fearless in that realm. Of course, I've always been obsessed with um, Joan on KVC. What are some of your favorite designers to wear? Uh, me. <laughs> it's Monday. <laughs> Turning into burlesque. <laughs> You get mesmerized and pulled in, and it was like, I don't know, I kind of really knew in the back of my head this was gonna happen. You know, my, my whole journey in this fashion business has been incredible, because I never was one of those people who knew I wanted to be a designer, or knew I wanted to be a stylist. I kind of knew I wanted to do it all. I give everything as much for QVC and my line there, as I did for an Italian Vogue shoot. They both give me joy for completely different reasons. I was always afraid of being in front of the camera, and I made that commitment to myself that I was going to do that, um, not knowing that it was QVC, and the stars aligned. And The way QVC is in this big sort of operation that it is, it's so fascinating to me. It just kind of fits in that aesthetic of the way my mind works. Like there's nothing wrong with anything that is happening out there that's offering women something that works in their world. <laughs>the girl in jeans bible and my bible personally and would you sign yeah, it for me of course i will that's amazing that you love this because that was really like my whole intention i mean it was for myself as much as like hoping that other people would be inspired by it so well this is your gift to me but i have a gift for you <laughs> seeing as you collect birkins this is one that i made what wait i've seen these i know did you know I know these? It was from my um, my collection um, called Eccentric Ladies. The whole collection was about you know women that inspire me and that have really dedicated their life in pursuit of rare beauty. There's this one and then there's one at V Files. So there's only two in the world. Wait a minute. But there's only one of you. I'm freaking out. <laughs> oh my god, style me. So good. We're out of here. Bye now.